Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Monday, the 19th of September. And of course, we start off by uh, wishing uh, all the friends and relatives of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II uh, as good a day as possible for her final uh, resting, her final funeral today. Now, the past couple of days, there's been some quite bad news on this channel, really. Two days, two, three days, days ago, we looked at this um, mass disabling event in the uh, United States. A lot of people suffering from long COVID and other chronic morbidities, possibly from other causes as well. And yesterday we looked at the high level of, of excess mortality, which is undeniable around the world. So I wanted to bring you some better news today. Now, the news I want to bring is optimism about the, uh, the endemicity of, of the pandemic. Now, I'm going to be giving you some precise data later on. And this is just the main point of the video, really. We're going to be looking at new variants, but there's a big study now from the, from the NHS in the UK. Um, and it looked at BA2 versus BA4 and BA5. Is there more serious uh, consequences to infection? And the answer is there isn't. So BA4 and BA5 don't cause, don't cause, we can say this definitively now from UK data, don't cause more severe disease than BA2. And of course, these are all the Omicron subvariants. Now, we're going to be talking about some new Omicron subvariants today. But because they're just presenting, we don't have the data as whether they're going to make people sicker. But based on the past, they probably won't. So we're going to say definitively today that people with BA4 infection and BA5 infection don't have more hospitalisation than people with BA2 Omicron infection. So I think this is good news. And I think what this means is we're going to become more and more endemic in terms of the, uh, the pandemic with less and less severity of disease while still experiencing, of course, some inconvenience from common cold type symptoms for most people. Not for everyone, not for total. We can't talk in absolute terms, of course not, but for most people. So I think it's fairly good news. So let, let, let's just go through this data now fairly quickly, fairly quickly. Now, this is the variant report from the Centers for Disease Control in the States. Now, there's some increase in this BA derivative of BA4 called BA4.6, another one called BA2.75. Now, this is the variant now cast in the States. Now, BA5, of course, is, of course, is still the predominant one. But there is this increase here. This is the BA4.6. Uh, and the, the BA, uh, this other one, the BA2.75, is only a small increase at the moment. But uh, I'm happy to predict today that the BA2.75 will become more predominant for reasons I'm going to give uh, from UK data. Now, uh, it's actually quite interesting, this. Uh, BA4.6, progressive increase in, in, in the United States, starting to slowly, very slowly displace BA5. United States of America, they've sequenced uh, 9,526 cases. Canada, they've sequenced 1,007 cases. Denmark, 500 cases. France, 400 cases. You'll be relieved to know I'm not going to go through all these. But just shows that it, this BA4.6 has been picked up all over the world, indicating that though there's a slight variation between countries in, in the prevalence of various uh, particular derivatives of Omicron and variants. Basically, this is a pandemic and it really is a global melting pot, which is why I wanted to show you that data. And again, we'll expect this to carry on as we go more and more into endemicity and COVID becomes less and less um, relevant in our daily lives, we certainly hope. So the, these are all four point, BA 4.6 detected in all of these countries, France, Australia, Germany, Chile, and all of these are the other ones here, which I'm not going to go through. But it, 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 I'd put them. the reason to put them on is not to blind us with data, but uh, just to point out that this is truly a, a global phenomena that we're living through now. Now, the next one is BA 2.75, which is interesting. Some increase in the United States, as we saw, but the growth advantage is currently at 61%. So it's not double, that will be 100%, but it's 61% in the UK uh, against other lineages. So we expect do BA 2.75 to become more prevalent. Do we expect it to cause more severe disease? No, I don't really think we do, unless data comes along to show that. But based on the previous variants of Omicron, we expect a lot of cross immunity and cross protection, although people will be still getting some symptomatic uh, disease, we expect. And again, I'll give evidence for that in a minute. Current UK now cast, so BA5, 84.8%, uh, the UK, 87.2%. Pretty, pretty similar. And again, BA 4.6, um, US 10.3, UK 3.3. And there's the other variants that are 
currently around. BA 2.75, which we are going to talk about. 1.3 in the United States, 1.6 in the United Kingdom. Uh, no deltas, no, um, some, the UK is measuring others. No deltas, no Wuhan strain, no alpha strain, and no XE either. XE, you might remember, was that recombinant variant. So it looks like someone was infected with BA1 and BA2 at the same time. The genetics got uh, mingled up inside one of the cells, and this new, this new um, variant XE came along. Uh, a hybrid variant but it hasn't gone anywhere so that is good news so again more good news really because i'm not expecting big problems from hybrid variants based on what we know already now uk technical briefing 45 something definitive here this is where the data is really coming from uk health security agency now they do say it contains early data analysis on emerging variants findings have a high level of uncertainty um but it's the best we've got so and and actually that they are being um I'm not saying there's understatement here, but but um, it's, there is some pretty good data here. Cut off as of the 5th of September. So BA5 is the predominant variant in the UK, of course. Now, this is the BA4.6, Omicron sublineage BA4.6, uh, an apparent small growth advantage over the BA5. BA4.6 represented 3.31% of UK samples, but as we say, we expect the the other BA 2.75 to probably outcompete this. Preliminary neutralization data comes from Oxford University, and so we expect some immune escape from BA4, BA4 or BA5 antibodies. Um, and uh, basically, that means there could be some, um, some, some potentially minimally, hopefully, in most cases, minimally symptomatic reinfection. Although, of course, antibodies are only one part of the immune story, as I think we know only too well now. Uh, BA 2.75, so not a lot in the UK at the moment, but we do expect it to grow because of the growth advantage. And there are sublineages, BA 2.75, 1 and 2, um, but of course we expect this. And in a sense this is part of the optimism because we're getting these changes, but it's all within the Omicron. There's been nothing new to replace Omicron. So I'm expecting... I'm not expecting any increase in pathogenicity or anything like there's no reason to suspect that that I'm aware of so this is this remains uh, a fairly optimistic hopefully an optimistic video uh, BA45 severity now this is the trial I was talking about it's a case control study it's the risk of being hospitalized as an inpatient so that's the outcome of the study uh, among people presenting to emergency care within 14 days of a positive test compared to comparing the risk of admission to hospital with BA4 or 5 versus BA2. Now, the numbers here are pretty good. So BA4, they had 2,500. BA5, they had 12,500. BA2, they had 17,000. So uh, as you'll see, pretty, uh, pretty, good, pre pretty good numbers here. And what was the outcome? Oh, this is clever. They adjusted for age, sex, vaccination status, week of the test. And we had two days of extreme heat where a lot of people were admitted to hospital and they accounted for that. So this is a very well adjusted study. And let's go on straight on to the good news now. There was no difference in the risk of admission between people infected with BA4 compared to BA2. There was no risk in the risk of admission between people infected with BA5 compared to BA2. So this is pretty good news. And here we see the pattern similar to the United States, but this one's from the UK, of the constant change in the variants. So there we go. We know definitively now that, um, and of course, we didn't know definitively until this data was published, that uh, BA4 and BA5 are not causing more hospitalizations than BA2. Because these are all Omicron subvariants, I'm not really expecting the BA4. 4.6 or the BA 2.75 to cause more severe illness or death and we are going to carry on with this constant change in this endemic uh, in this period of endemicity as hopefully the pandemic becomes less and less relevant in terms of severe illness hospitalization and death so thank you for watching today